Where did they get this money? How is this money, this $1.3 billion, where does this come from? So congressional investigators trying to uncover the trail of $1.3 billion in payments to Iran might want to focus on 13 large, identical sums that the Treasury Department paid to the State Department under the generic heading of settling foreign claims. The 13 payments were added to the $400 million dollars that the administration now concedes it shipped to the Iranian regime in foreign cash would bring the payout to $1.7 billion. Obama and Secretary of State Kerry announced on January 17th that total was to settle a dispute pending for decades. That's what happened. A couple days after they sent money to the Iranians, they sent the $1.3 billion. They divided it up into 13 payments of... 99 million, 999, whatever. Incredible. It's absolutely incredible to me. They get $1.7 billion, another $150 billion. They're perfecting their ICBMs. They're building their nuclear warheads. They're threatening U.S. naval ships in international waters. What the hell? Communists in the White House. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And Valerie Jarrett, another one, with Iranian roots. Yes, we do. Obama eventually did get a nuclear deal. Solomon's book shines in report. Let's get this guy on here, can we, Mr. Producer? Let's get this guy on here. Uh, this, this is, uh, this, this just, the facts have to get out. Listen to this. American diplomats had two sets of negotiations with Iran. One public channel with the British, Chinese, European Union, French, Germans, Russians, and the UN. And another bilateral track established through the Sultanate of Oman. In 2013, U.S. officials shut it on public buses between two hotels in Geneva to conduct the two tracks before telling their negotiating partners about the formerly secret channel to Iran. Eventually, the Iranians wore down the U.S. delegation. At the beginning of the talks in 2013, the U.S. position was for Iran to dismantle much of its nuclear infrastructure. By the end of the talks in 2015, Secretary of State John Kerry and his team, quote, agreed that Iran would then be allowed to build an industrial-scale nuclear program with hundreds of thousands of machines after a 10-year period of restraint. Unquote. There's your future, right there, in 10 years. Right there. There's your future. Mark, settle down. I am not settling down. My God, this country's been sold out. If you're not furious about this, nothing is going to make you furious. Absolutely beyond belief. By the end of the talks in 2015, Kerry and his team, worn down, agreed that Iran would then be allowed to build an industrial-scale nuclear program with hundreds of thousands of machines after a 10-year period of restraint. Big deal. 10-year period of restraint. Other U.S. red lines were demolished, too. The final deal would allow the U.N. ban on Iranian missile development to phase out after eight years and the arms embargo against Iran to expire after five years. Iran would not have to acknowledge that it had tried to develop a nuclear weapon, even though samples the Iranians collected at the Parchin facility found evidence of man-made uranium. In one particularly revealing passage, Solomon captures the thinking of John Kerry, who engaged in detailed negotiations over the deal in the final months of the talks. Quote, so many wars have been fought over misunderstandings, misinterpretation, lack of effective diplomacy, Kerry told Solomon in a 2016 interview. War is the failure of diplomacy. Kerry's diplomacy succeeded, but the Middle East got war anyway. The Revolutionary Guard continues to develop increasingly sophisticated weapon systems, including ballistic missiles inscribed with threats against Israel on their nose cones. Solomon writes in his book's concluding chapter, Khomeini and other revolutionary leaders, meanwhile, fine-tune the rhetorical attacks against the United States, seeming to need the American threat to justify their existence. There was a chance for a better outcome, writes Eli Lake. There's no guarantee that an Obama intervention would have been able to topple Khomeini back in 2009 when his people flooded the streets to protest an election the American president wouldn't say was stolen. But it was worth a try. Imagine if the uprising had succeeded. 
Perhaps then a nuclear deal could have brought about a real peace. Instead, Obama spent his presidency misunderstanding Iran's dictator, assuring the supreme leader America wouldn't aid his citizens when they tried to change the regime that oppresses them today. No one, no human being, has done more damage to the security of this nation, to the well-being of this nation, to future generations of this nation than Barack Obama. Nobody. Nobody's done more damage to the United States military, American foreign policy, and this nation than Barack Obama.